everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, let me know down in the comment section below how you're all doing. I hope you're all staying positive about this situation in our world right now. Um, I'm looking forward to my next race. I really can't wait. So it should be should be fun. First first day we go back to racing. Um, we'll wait for a few guys to join us um, so they not miss any of uh, what I will be talking about today. Basically, I want to just tell some stories from my own experience that might teach you guys something uh, about RC racing and from my from my uh, history. Uh, we'll start off from the Euros in 2015. I have one with the K1 Aero. This is the body shell I used in practice. And the car is at the factory at uh, Schumacher in the UK. So unfortunately, I cannot show it to you guys, but uh, I'll post some pictures uh, later on when I will be in the UK and have it with me. So it's in the coffee room over there. So. Hi everyone. I hope you're having a good evening. Hi Sasha. Um, hi La Luther. It's not a MI7 live. I'll be talking about some of the racing from the past. Good evening. Very well, and you? All right, so uh, I think we should start. It's already enough of us, and others will join later. Um, I'll be posting this video to my YouTube channel right here um, after it's done. So if you'd like to watch it later, then um, Please go to my YouTube channel. So first thing was the 2015 Euros. Um, it was a really good race. It was probably it was one of my first major wins. It was right after the EOS in Trenching, and I was able to win with my KC buggy. And uh, yeah, we went to the warm up. A um, couple couple months before the race, our pace was really well, really good. And um, I've worked with uh, Trish. And, uh, and some of other teammates like Peter Finnish. Um, and uh, we worked out a good setup, um, good tire strategy. The warm up did, didn't go too well. Um, I think I was probably like nine or something like that. And, uh, and it wasn't basically a really good race. But then later on, um, we came to the race. And tour drive was a bit slow. We didn't have uh, too much pace. I was running the the car with the belt and the position four that was KF KF two mid oh that was KF two mid mid I think and that was that's how it was called. It was a pretty good race for for me. I, I made the main which was the goal. Uh Peter finished a teammate of mine uh from, from back these days and he was fourth after qualifying so he did very well and uh and yeah, I, I think I finished 10th in tour drive. Wasn't the, the biggest achievement, but I, I was pretty happy with, with making the AMA. Mm, and then, uh, then four drive started off well. Practice was pretty good. And um, we bed in the tires quite, quite a bit. I think we had like 10, 10 sets probably bed in already after practice. To make sure I have um, I have all these ready for qualifying and finals, so that was probably the main goal for for practice to bed in the tires so we're ready for for the race. And um, yeah, qualifying went well. I was able to TQ round one, and by probably a small margin, the qualifying were very tight over there from what I remember. And. Uh, um, and then I think because the qualifying was split to two days of racing, so the when I TQ'd Q1, it was quite a surprise. Um, obviously, I was using the tires from from practice that I bet in, 
as we found this was the best option for me. Mm, so it was quite a surprise. I was really excited after after the first run. Uh, I think it made me a bit more ne nervous for the next ones because uh, I was in the B heat as well. And I don't really remember uh, why, but uh, it's how they mixed up all the top drivers after practice. I was in the B heat, so I, actually I was driving alone, so I didn't have to, I didn't have anyone to pace uh, with me. Um, so I was just driving my, my myself for five minutes, trying the best I can. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was good. It was a good good weekend. Um, actually, good week. You really take the week. Mm. And and yeah, as I said, I was quite nervous and during the qualifying, but then the final round, the fifth round of qualifying came and it was only two to count. And um, I had a small crash, but then luckily I was able to get back on my wheels and managed to TQ by like five hundreds. So, um, so yeah, it was very very close with Neil Craig and, and then Jorn with his serpent car. Actually, he was third after qualifying, so um, that was that was very exciting for me and, and my whole team. Um, it was my second time main at the Euros in, uh, in forward drive. So you know, I didn't really know how to how to act. I think it didn't really uh, mean to me in this moment uh, at all because I didn't realize what was going on. And then we were going straight to finals. So A1 was uh, not so well for me. I crashed on the first lap and just made a mistake on, on, on the jump and, uh, and finished fourth. And I think the, the most important thing at that race was uh, the, the speech from Mas Schumacher, from Mark Masgrove. Uh, he gave me after A1. And uh, what he told me was, I, I remember uh, it until today, he told me to forget everything that happened before and these next two finals are separate legs and uh, and just go for it, enjoy it. And, and that's what I did. In A2 and A3, I was able to keep calm and, and keep uh, Neil and Jorn behind me. And uh, it, was, it was an amazing achievement for me and I was so happy uh, about it. And it was my first year with, Schum with Schumacher, so probably no one expected um, me to be up there. Um, so yeah, I was I was so happy about that, and uh, for sure it will uh, stay in in the memory of mine for for a long time. Uh, hi Scott, thank you. Um, it's quite fun to drive on uh, on in the garden. Obviously, it's not not a professional track, but it's I think it's better than VRC. So I can hopefully keep myself entertained for for the next uh, hopefully couple of weeks the most, and then we can b get back to racing. Hey Bartek, um, hi Ty, I hope you're well in in Connecticut, doing some music, entertaining yourself. Thank you for the greetings. Hi Stevie, I hope you're well. What do you and your dad clash with the, with the most good setups? Um, actually everything I think. Um, basically, probably, um, pro it's probably I never agree with his ideas. Uh, so we always argue. Um, at the at the track, um, he he pops up with an idea and then I deny it uh, straight away. Um, but sometimes he has good ideas and it uh, turns out they, they work quite well. So, uh, so it's, it's very helpful, but we, I think we argue about everything. It probably it will, it's, I think it's normal for, for a father and son racing team. Uh, I, I think I've never seen a father and son team that, that doesn't argue at the race. And it's very unusual, I think, in my opinion. So. And I'm not too worried about me arguing with him. Tell me, tell me uh, how you keeping yourself entertained, Stevie, in uh, in Scotland. I hope you you have some activities. Where did I shave my moustache? I didn't like it. 
Cześć Magda. Anna. Cześć Filip. Ja, to jest Trusty. He's a great guy. Helped me quite a lot. I think without him I wouldn't be here. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm very grateful for all the work he does. Yeah, I I really miss racing, and uh, I hopefully I can move to UK soon so we can have some fun in the pits with with you and Alan. I'm looking forward to the international this year. I hope it happens. Um, yeah, we hope. Unfortunately, the Euros are, were cancelled, so are they going to, to move the Euros at the Robin Hood to next year, or is it going to the next venue? I, I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know uh, in the comments. We'll be cool with what the Euros next year, actually, at Robin Hood. AstroTurf. I went um, to the Opal International uh, a few times before and probably one of my favorite races so I, I've had quite a lot of practice on this track so I was looking forward to that race but unfortunately it's cancelled so maybe maybe next year we can make a race yeah I'm looking forward to it I'll, I think I'll be able to race quite a lot um, yeah there are lots of different categories in the UK as there are so many so many different um, possibilities over there, so many different tracks, AstroTurf and, and Dirt, so that would be really cool. All right, um, I'll go to the next question. Um, I was asked to talk about the EOS final round in 2018 season at Andernach, Arena 33, and this is probably, this was probably one of my in most important races that I ever had. Um, it was so both titles, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, were to be decided at that that race. And uh, I was going into that race as the only one with the possibility to win both classes. In two-wheel drive, I was uh, fighting with Neil Craig for the championship, and in four-wheel drive with Bruno. Um, so it was uh, it was a really nerve-wracking race, um, but now it's a it's a great mem memory. So before before that race, uh, we went to test quite a lot on AstroTurf tracks. Mm, as it was very important to get a practice. It was the only AstroTurf round, and it was the the first the first outdoor uh, EOS ever. So we tested quite a lot and um, and concentrated to, to take both both Ws. So um, two wheel drive, uh, Neil. Had to take the win to steal the title from me. I didn't have the best race. Um, I think I was probably thinking about mm, the the title and the overall outcome too much. Mm, didn't concentrate enough on um, on on the racing part, and probably I was I was making lots of silly mistakes, which which happens to to anyone. So uh, so two drive was in my race, but luckily I had your Norman uh, on on my side as as my teammate. And he was able to TQ, uh, TQ and and win the race in in two drives. So that was uh, amazing for him. Uh, it was probably his first COS win since uh, like three years or something like that. Uh, so I was really happy for him. And of course he uh, he managed to to beat Neil, and that made me the EOS champion in two drive. So that was a very good weekend for for the Schumacher team. And then we we moved on to forward drive, which I had to win. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to TQ that one, but I had to win um, this race. And um, and yeah, qualify. Um, practice started off really well. Uh, basically, me, Jorn, uh, were the fastest guys, and then Bruno was right there with us as well. But he was making some small mistakes, which uh, were keeping um, him from from running with us on, on the first and second positions and uh, we qualified first was Jorn, I was second, Bruno was third and uh, basically I needed to win 
that was all I had to do. I had to win in front of um, everyone, and Bruno had to just make me not win. And uh, but luckily in in the finals we we draw fair, and Bruno had his own mistakes, and I was able to drive away with Jorn, and we had a really good fight together in A1. Um, in A1, Jorn made a mistake on the first lap, from what I remember, and then I was able to uh, take the lead and, and finish first in, in the first final. And then in the second final, we drove away uh, quickly at the beginning, and then uh, we had a fight um, for the whole five minutes again. And this was a really, really cool race for, for the Schumacher team, as this was our first year with the Qatar 1. And that was a newly designed and released car at the beginning of that season. And then uh, we finished off on a high note with winning and the whole season with, with that car. And Jorn finished third on the podium. So I was really happy about that. And uh, it was I was very nervous um, in, in the finals, of course, as, as, as anyone. But luckily I was able to, to keep it calm, keep it on four wheels. And um, of course, it took me some, some luck. In the finals, uh, Jorn made his own mistakes and I was able to capitalize on them. And uh, that's how I was able to win. That was probably, I think this this whole season, the 2018-19 season, uh, was very successful for me and probably the maybe not the best years. I think 2019 was a very good year for me uh, with the third place at the world. Um, Euros was probably quite unlucky for me, but I was still able to make double podium. So, and so I think the 2018-19 EO season was one of the proudest for me moments uh, of my of my career so far. Hi Lee, thank you for joining. Mm, mm, yeah, I was. I'm um, yeah, Stevie. I'm looking forward to to the inter international. It's always a good. Good race. So, uh, question from Lee: Are there any definite changes you make to the laydown on wet Astro? Well, of course, uh, switch the tire compound to silver. Um, go to Boldiff, um, and uh, it depends how much time you have because usually at the races, like in the UK, the weather is very changeable, so it's like on and off. Um, so if you don't have enough time. I suggest you to have a gearbox ready with a ball diff in there, different uh, different spare, different gearing, different different motor, more, more towing, um, and basically have it prepared for for wet racing, a uh, different camber position and combining position. And so I suggest you getting that, and uh, so quickly when when it's dry, you race your dry gearbox. And then when it starts to rain and your run is soon, put on the new gearbox, the, the wet gearbox, you can call it the wet gearbox, and bolt it on the chassis and basically are ready to run. Um, usually well, you also have a set of shocks uh, for wet, which are softer, softer springs, just to have that sus suspension working uh, very softly. Uh, so you generate some grip in the very low, uh, low traction condition and uh, it should help you. Um, so yeah, but the probably the biggest thing is just have the gearbox ready, another gearbox, and this will help you a lot in in any any situation. Hi Henrika, I hope you are well and um, and enjoying the evening. Christian, hi David. Uh, question from David: uh, How are you finding the new Schumacher wheels compared to the previous style? Um, not not much difference, I, I would say. Uh, it's they're just I, I of, of, like honestly when I uh, when I tested uh, it almost didn't make any difference for me. So uh, um, I wouldn't be too worried about different feeling of of them. Um, I'm usually I'm quite bad at noticing any difference in, in setup changes or, or like something like wheels. So. I didn't feel any any difference. All right. Um, the next race I was asked to talk about was the Euros in France in 2018. 
um, it was uh, probably um, quite a, like quite many people talked about this race because of the organization issue and uh, and basically what was going uh, on there. Um, so talking from the beginning, we went to to the warm up of course, uh, tested a lot of stuff, and prepare ourselves for for the race. And uh, we're very I was I was very excited to go there, as our cars work very well. At the warm up, I was able to. Um, I think I won two drive at the, in the warm up, and then four drive I was second, but my pace was mm, the best out there. Mm, just then I wasn't able to, to convert it into the win. So go into the race, I was very confident. Uh, of course, we had that Tattel one, which we released at the beginning of that year, and uh, I ran the KD car. We tested both the. That was uh, KC position four, and then also um, the laydown buggy, and the KD felt better for me. Uh, I know some Schumacher drivers were switching uh, from uh, from the KD, and they were trying also the, the our KC position four. And but uh, for me, the KD was the best, and I I thought I would stick to one car. Um, and then practice started off well. I, I was very confident going to that race, as um, as I knew I had, I had the pace at the warm up. And then uh, qualifying started. I was able to TQ Q1. Um, I had some small bubbles in in the qualifying, which I think were the, the biggest reason uh, for me not. And doing better at that race as uh, the qualifying position, and I think uh, did me a bit a bit wrong in the finals. So uh, I was I qualified behind Yona, and he took the TQ, well deserved TQ. And uh, we had the same points, but he had the faster time. And then into the finals, uh, me and Yona were uh, a bit faster, I think, than the rest, and we were able to to draw the draw the way, but. Um, I had some some bubbles and also quite tough luck uh, while fighting for the position. And then I was that was in A three. It was a very exciting race. Uh, me and Jonah uh, drove away quite a bit. And then I made a mistake and I dropped like five, fifth or six. Uh, and basically I I thought this was over. And of course I didn't give up and try to get back racing uh, and and push really hard until the race is finished it's always what you should do and always what i i do and um, in the end i, w I had uh, contact with with lee martin on the jump it was quite unlucky for me uh, basically we went side by side on the jump and uh, we touched which i wasn't able to um to, to do anything about it and lee as well uh, we're just unlucky, and then I landed wrong of the jump, landed on my back wheel, and the drive shaft popped out. And uh, I was on the on the inside on that jump, so probably if we landed, okay, then probably I would get the inside. And if I had won the final, I'd win the, the title. Uh, so I was really gutted about that one. And the true drive European title is the one. I'm still looking and, and looking for uh, in the future, and it's probably the. Of course, I would like to win the the IFMA title in, in any off-road category, and also others uh, other categories. But the True Drive European title uh, has been very close uh, to me for like four years now, and so I was looking forward to the Euros this year, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. So hopefully next year I'll be able to fight for that and then um, hopefully they take the win and uh, we have very strong uh, platform right now with the Schumacher Kuga Leydon buggy um, so I, I can't wait to, to have the possibility to fight for the wins again and then four drive started again lots of confidence uh, I had that extra boost um, because of the poor result in, uh, in two drive Mm, and yeah, practice started off well. David was quite fast, um, and uh, he was probably the one to 
to catch in, in practice. He was uh, put in very consistent and fast lap times. And then um, I think at the, the end, I would actually keep good practice. I had really good, uh, I was having two or three laps um, to count. And then qualifying started. I was able to uh, TQ Q1, which was really, really good for me. I uh, I was really happy about that, and I was excited to go to go further to Q2. So I was hoping for another good run, and then everything went downhill. Um, basically, I wasn't able to put in a clean run. Um, the whole race was falling apart for me. Um, I was I was losing pace. Uh, it it wasn't like any anything like it wasn't working for me. Um, so we're looking for some different options. We thought probably the conditions change, change. So then we tried different, um, different setup, and we basically tried everything to get back uh, to the top. And it was quite a crazy qualifying uh, session for me. As uh, in the European Championships, it's two out of five to count. So I had. Um, I had a zero from the TQ from Q1, and then my next score to count was an 11 in Q5, I think, which was quite quite crazy. Um, and then the finals, I qualified eight, and somehow I was able to to climb myself to third, which I was quite happy about. And and Jorn was second. Uh, so, so that was that was an all right race for us. Uh, our expectations were a bit higher. I was hoping for more, uh, but then uh, what turned out to be our uh, our mistake was uh, our tire strategy. Uh, basically, um, we thought like at the warm up, the longer we run on a set of tires, uh, the better. But uh, but it turned out that you need to run new tires, and uh, and this is how 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 it's faster. So uh, the, the the local guys and, and David and all the guys in top run new tires uh, every run, which was completely different to our um, our testing for at the warm up because at the warm up we run same same set of tires probably for like a full day or two days even. And uh, so I was. I was a bit unlucky for for us, and also a, a mistake from from our side, which which I wasn't too happy about. But, but it was a lesson to learn, and uh, and we've learned our, our lesson. And uh, after after the race, I was excited to go to the next one and and fight for the win. So uh, it was it was a tough race for us, but uh, but a, a good lesson to have, and it's always uh, always good to. Have some of the downs, uh, some of the worst weekends to to teach you uh, and boost your motivation to do better at the, at the next one. All right. Hi everyone. If uh, if you joined later, I hope you're having a good good evening. A uh, question from from Bjorn. Thank you for the question. And the question is: Hey, how do you get the motor temps low? When it's hot outside, only a fan on the motor, also some holes in the body. Um, basically, in in modified, I think it's not a big issue. And I I put a fan near the motor, um, on on all my cars. Um, not in I'm I'm not sure which category you're talking about, but basically, I just I just put a fan next to the motor. Um, I can show you. On my car, I hope you will see it. Fun is right here, so it's not in a complicated place. It's behind the battery and in front of the motor. So, um, so yeah, I just I just put the motor in there, uh, in the the fan next to the motor. Not to overthink it, uh, but I know in in stock racing it's a bit more important. So um, it's some it's something uh, in forward drive. Uh, in forward drive, it's also it's on the on the other side of of the motor. So I mean, on, of the chassis. Um, so yeah, it's it's something I never really care about. And the LRP electronics are really good with temperatures. Um, so I, I've never have I never have the issue. I always check that the temperatures. 
um, if, if they're good enough and, and it's all fine. Um, but I know in stock it's quite a big uh, big thing. Um, and also I I remember some time ago I would put the holes uh, here in the body shell. And uh, as you can see I have this old K1 body shell. I have some holes here. Um, so you can put some holes in the body shell or for sure it will help you. Um, but basically having the fun in the correct position is is the is the key to have the, the temp slow uh, and especially if you're running stock then uh, then it is very important uh, to get the power from the motor all right then i'll go through the last uh, last race and if you guys have any questions for me uh, like like bjorn or, or david um put them in the comments and i will go through them and uh, i'll talk about the last last race i was asked ask about uh, so someone asked me about the 2020 World Worlds uh, because some of the F1 drivers were there um, and yeah it was a good experience for me I was able to meet Alex Albon I don't know if uh, if any team, manager, team managers were over there I didn't really see any of them maybe I, I missed I missed someone uh, that'll be it'll be a shame but I've only met Alex and uh, he was cool. He, he was quite enthusiastic about uh, about all these cars and and seeing them flying around really fast because it was full scale. Um, so I think you know he was uh, he was excited to to um, to see our 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 racing and how different it is from from F1, but also how similar it is and how professional. Um, and but I think he was there only for a couple of minutes. I, I think he. He just passed by the pits, watched for a bit, and then um, he continued his uh, his shopping with his family. I think so. That was quite a quite quite a uh, good experience to, to to have him over there, and, and good for our our sport uh, as well. I hope at some point in the future, and uh, RC will get rec recognition it deserves, and uh, hopefully it will be in the television at, at some someday and uh, I'll be able to to be at the professional level still at that point so I'm looking forward to these days and also I, I've seen uh, Esteban Ocon uh, from Renault he posted some pictures running his A scale nitro buggy and uh, off-road uh, so that was quite cool to see as well and uh, maybe these F1 drivers can promote our uh, our cars and and maybe in the future it will be a similar position uh, to, to the F1 drivers. That would be cool. Um, all right, the question from Edward. Hi, Edward. How are you? Do you change the shape of your shell for different tracks and grip levels and some other error changes other than the rear wing? Um, so yeah, in, uh, in forward drive, we have for now we have three different options that I use. It's the um, I don't have it with me here. It's the Aerox uh, L1 body shell, the original L1 L1 car, uh, and uh, that's that's the that was the body shell I used previously. And this one is um, the L1 Aerox body shell. It's probably it's for sure it's the lowest body shell uh, lowest center of gravity, gravity it's quite smooth uh, keeps the car flat so it is a really good it's a really good body shell if you want your car to be smooth then we have the first Peguin body shell that I use at the Worlds this body shell makes the car stable I think it gives a bit more side grip so it's quite good for low grip con conditions like uh, like the worlds and then the cut l1 evo penguin body shell uh, it's the most aggressive one it's the one i enjoy running it on carpet so when i go to a new track and i have lots of time to test then definitely i will test different types of body shells for the uh, for, for the different uh, aerodynamics and then see what's the difference um, but definitely it's not the most important thing you should concentrate on the setup um, and basically 
what what is more important so the setup yourself getting getting used to the track uh, but when I have lots of time and uh, like I was at the RC Madness in the US and Connecticut for a Schumacher GP over there I had all three body shells for my four drive and I would switch them back to back to back test and, and see what's the difference and then I would stick with one body shell for the race so if you have lots of time or you are at your home track then you can also test the different types of body shells it is a it's a good change and sometimes it can give you like 0.2 per lap which is a huge difference on that ultimate uh, level in RC uh, so it's definitely worth to, to try in different body shells in tour drive we have uh, this Aerox uh, body shell uh, and then we also have the dark Penguin body shell and then the original penguin. So at the worlds again, I ran the original penguin body shell because it was the smoothest one, and the grip was so low. So basically, we tried to get the two drive as smooth as possible, so it's easy to drive. Um, so that was the body shell I used over there. On carpet right now, I'm use I was using this one, uh, and the dark body shell came out recently. But uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to try it out at uh, at any big event. I tried it at the at my local track at uh, Titan RC Arena. It's a pretty good sized uh, carpet track, good grip, uh, good jumps, uh, and they were very similar. Uh, probably probably not so much difference between them, but the dart was tiny bit faster. I think I should do some more testing on that and then make sure that one of them is the best. Um, but I cannot see any, any difference. Um, they have both similar steering. So that's probably what I'm looking looking for when I'm testing different body shells. Which one is more aggressive or which one is less aggressive or more more, more high speed steering or more rotation in, in the hairpins. Um, so this is I always look uh, what I look for when changing different body shells and it's worth to, to try out some of the different designs. A uh, question from Thomas Maretsky, do you know if there is a good track in Gdańsk? I don't... I have no idea, uh, to be to be honest. I, I don't know. Uh, I've never heard of a track in Gdańsk. I know there is a, a nice track in, uh, in Szczecin. Uh, and some other uh, bigger cities in, in Poland but I, I've never heard it about the track in Gdańsk maybe some of the Polish drivers can, uh, can, can, can say if they maybe know about the track in Gdańsk but I don't know uh, but you can also travel to different cities and uh, there are lots of cool tracks in, in Poland right now and uh, the guys at the XRS Poland team are doing a fantastic job um, putting on big events in, in Poland and the, the VRC event uh, this weekend, which would be quite cool. I'll be watching, I will not be racing. I don't think the um, VRC platform is the right thing to, to, to do practice on. Um, I have my garden, so I'll be practicing at, in my garden. But if, if you are bored, you might as well have some fun on it. But would, it would be interesting if after after all, all these days of practicing and on VRC, uh, people get back to the real world and uh, they're much slower. So I don't I don't know about VRC. I've I've never liked it, but maybe it's a it's a nice platform and it's good to have your your radio in in, in your hands to to get the rust of them and. Uh, and just enjoy, have some fun with uh, with your kid or with your friends. Um, but I will probably not not raise the RC. Um, all right, I think uh, we'll be finishing uh, soon. This this video will be this this live stream will go on my YouTube channel right here. Uh, so if any of you missed the beginning or you would like to watch it again. And then please go go there and uh, and and watch it. I hope you all guys enjoy. I hope you all stay safe and uh, and positive these days. It's been really difficult for for many of us, um, from probably the whole world, 
and everyone is struggling, but I mean, we just need to keep positive. Um, look forward to, to our to our day when everything opens again, and uh, stay at home as as much as as possible, and and just help help everyone as as you can, but keep the distance uh, and help each other. I think that's that's the most important thing. If we're all in this together, and the whole world is world in, is in this together. So we need to work work together to to overcome the virus and. It will be over in no time, and we can all be happy again um, after we can go out and do racing again and any other social activities. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you all had a good time with me and a bit shorter one. Uh, if you want to see more of these live streams, probably I'll be doing them on Fridays and until we can and go back to racing. So, if you like to see more of them, please. Let me know, and then I'll think of some new topics and uh, and ideas that uh, that I have uh, on my mind. I'm sitting at home, so uh, and I'm practicing in my garden, so I'll be trying to to give you guys some content so you might learn something. And for now, I'd like to thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.